Welcome back to Arthritis Now, brought to you by the Arthritis National Research Foundation. I'm your host, Kyle Langan, and today we're going to be talking to Dr. Christine Beaton from Baylor College of Medicine, who's developing an autoimmune treatment derived from sea anemones. Hi, Dr. Beaton. Thank you very much for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. It's my pleasure to talk with you today. Great. Thanks. Um, so let's just start off by, if you could tell us what institution you are a part of and what your title is. I'm currently a, an assistant professor at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. Perfect. And when were you funded by the Arthritis National Research Foundation? And if you, and if you could give us a little bit um, of how you felt when you were actually, when you received that grant from us. So I was funded uh, in the year 2004 to 2005 while I was a senior postdoctoral fellow at the University of California in Irvine. And uh, this was actually the very first funding I had as a principal investigator, which really for a junior scientist is an enormous step in a research career. Now, I was doing a little bit of research on your research, and you're doing, um, you're working on a project right now that's developed SHK-186, um, which is a drug that targets autoimmune diseases, most notably psoriatic arthritis. And I was wondering if you could tell us what SHK-186 stands for, and then if you could just give us also a little bit more of a lay summary about what your research is. So SHK-186 sounds a little mysterious, but really it's not. It's, it's not really a very special name. So SHK stands for Stichodactylia helianthus, potassium blocking peptide. Stichodactylia helianthus is a sea anemone that lives off the coast of Cuba that makes this SHK peptide. Uh, SHK is great because it blocks the potassium channel found on the white blood cells involved in autoimmune diseases. The problem is that it also blocks potassium channels found in other tissues such as the brain. And we were worried that SHK as such might be toxic. So we really didn't want to push that forward. So we made a lot of modifications of SHK and modification number 186, making SHK 186, is the one that yielded a, a peptide that was extremely potent, but also extremely selective for the KV1.3 potassium channel find, found on the white blood cells of interest. Now, successful research or phases of your research have been conducted in the past, correct? Yes. And so you have one more that's coming up, or you have more that are coming up on the horizon. I was just wondering if you could um, tell us what kind of information that you received from those other phases that you're going to apply to this next one. So SHK-186 uh, went through a lot of preclinical trials, uh, both in uh, samples from patients with autoimmune diseases and also animal models of autoimmune diseases. And the patent that covers SHK-186 was licensed to a company in Seattle called Keneta. And uh, they did a lot of the preclinical trials. They also did some phase 1A and phase 1B clinical trials in healthy volunteers. And what they gathered from those trials are two extremely important pieces of information. One is that SHK-186 is well tolerated in humans, which is extremely important. And the other one is they were able to narrow down a dose that they're going to be able to use in the near future uh, in injecting SHK-186 to patients with psoriatic arthritis in a phase 1b study. I was wondering what led you to study the sea anemone um, as a method of treatment for those with autoimmune diseases. So like a lot of research, um, there was part of luck and part of good communication between people. And it was a worldwide effort, really, that led to SHK-186. So it started in Cuba, actually, where a scientist uh, took the sea anemone and ground it up and found a compound that was affecting uh, the brain of mice when they injected it. Uh, they didn't have the resources to push it further, so they sent this compound to a group in Europe who actually identified the SHK peptide. A group in Florida then took that peptide and they were able to uh, synthesize it in the labo laboratory. And that completely changed things because now instead of having to isolate it from the sea anemone, we could actually make larger amounts in the laboratory to study. 
And really that's when we came in because it was found that this peptide blocked the KV1.3 potassium channel on uh, this type of white blood cells, on T lymphocytes. And altogether, uh, we modified the peptides little by little, tested them, and really came up with SHK186. We were able to test it uh, on samples from patients with autoimmune diseases, with the collaboration of physicians, and then in animal models of autoimmune diseases. I think um, a lot of times people don't understand what it what an exactly a sea anemone is. They think it's a plant, but it's actually an animal, like you had mentioned. What um, and can you just explain what it does? So uh, yes, a lot of people think that uh, sea anemones are plants, but really they are animals, and they need to feed like any animal. So they use venom to stunt their prey so they can eat them, and a lot of venoms contain ion channel modulators, ion channel blockers. And C. anemones are not different. They contain a number of ion channel modulators, one of them being SHK. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out at curearthritis.org for all the latest updates on the foundation. And don't forget to tune back in two weeks for part two of our interview with Dr. Beaton.